All right. Hey guys, it's Carter from Carlson Auto Detailing. Now I'm going to be doing a standard exterior detail on this Jeep Renegade right here. I've done an interior detail on it before in my previous videos, which was a sand removal process. So make sure to check out that video later in your own time. But for this video, we're gonna be doing a full exterior wash, uh, treat the wheels right here, and we're gonna be addressing some traffic film that is on the car, as well as some bird droppings. So plenty of information here. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below for more future content like this down the road. So. Let's get started. Now it has definitely been a while since the last exterior wash for the channel, and it's refreshing to do this kind of work again to post for you guys to enjoy the oddly satisfying befores and afters. For this video, we will be doing a standard wash package for this returning Jeep Renegade after experiencing some stuck on grime on the paint. From road film on the humid and rainy days, to press tires in need of a clean dressing, as well as some early Christmas presents from the birds in the sky. Now, by no means this is an eyesoring, dirty vehicle meant for YouTube thumbnails, but definitely could use some love to bring back that stealthy renegade appearance. Lots of work to do here, so make sure to grab yourself several snacks, put on your best headphones, take some notes if necessary if you're a detailer, and, as always, enjoy the video. Despite my package being called a standard exterior detail package, it is by no means a simple once over with simple products. Here I will showcase my work with several high end detailing products that I use to ensure high cleaning output as well as an extended protection for the time to come on the vehicle's adventures. Lots of work here, so let's get on with the show. With a lot of chocolate glaze accumulated on these donuts, it is a no-brainer to start on the wheels and tires before working on the upper portions of the vehicle. As a pre-treatment, I pump it up with my pump sprayer containing a degreaser diluted at 4 to 1. This helps remove a vast majority of the gunk buildup before initiating in the contact cleaning. To lower the chances of swirls and other potential surface defects, this is a pretty handy solution. This cleaner was liberally sprayed all over the tires, the lug nuts, wheels, and fenders, to which was then rinsed away revealing a cleaner surface to work on. With the majority of the grime removed, I then proceed onto the contact cleaning. I spray on some Adam's wheel and tire cleaner diluted one to one around all the surfaces, then agitate it with a dedicated tire brush. With this dilution, I can ensure enough bite is going through the rubber to remove all that nasty goop and to be certain I have a prep surface for a tire dressing. As you can see, with the chocolate milk foaming up on the surface, despite the APC pre-rinse, the tires were definitely needed in some cleaning to restore that stealthy appearance. I then spray on some of the fenders and agitate them with a dedicated fender brush. Now, some folk like to clean the fenders and some don't, and to be very honest with you, it's mostly all personal opinion. However, one thing that you will need to keep in mind is that for vehicles with triple black colorways and a raised body, missing the fenders will stick out like a sore thumb if left unattended, so treat them accordingly to avoid jeopardizing the detail. After a rinse from the alkaline cleaners, I begin to clean the wheels with my new favorite acid-based wheel cleaner from Kosh Kemi called Magic Wheel Cleaner. Using it at full strength, it has a powerful yet gentle blend in the chemistry to remove the embedded brake dust with some foaming action. It didn't happen on this vehicle, but on surfaces with a lot of brake dust or iron particles, it has an active ingredient that turns it purple as a visual indicator of the product doing its job. Compared to other acid-based cleaners, this one by far is the least smelly one. Not as in you could take a whiff out of it, I mean it still smells pretty bad but nowhere as obnoxious as other well-known brands. This one is much more tolerable and forgiving. After cleaning the wheel, it was thoroughly rinsed to wash away any remaining cleaner residue or foam, revealing a squeaky clean wheel. Working on the other wheels and tires, you can definitely notice one thing that I am a fan of, and that is cleaners with high foaming capabilities. For dedicated wheel cleaners, all-in-ones like wheel and tire cleaners, and APCs or degreasers, I prefer a high foaming solution because it helps prevent the product from running off the surface, lubricates it for the contact cleaning, as well as keeping the surface cool with a blanket of bubbles when outdoors, like I am right here. 
There are some folk that prefer non-foaming cleaners, and that's okay. To be very honest with you, I used to be like that as well. It is mostly personal preference and dependent on where the detailer is working, such as in a shop or outdoors. Now, the last wheel unfortunately was met with the sun, and despite being in 65 degrees Fahrenheit weather, the rays of the sun were pretty strong since it had rained recently at the time of recording and can easily evaporate any chemical left unattended. Coincidentally, it happened to be the dirtiest wheel of them all, but that was no excuse to rotate the car since I have experience working in direct sunlight during the brutal summer with no shade and I am quite aware of the potential risks using strong cleaners. So calculating my work time, I proceed working with one area at a time and rinse thoroughly so the product doesn't dry. The APC pre-rinse went well with no issues and the tire was tackled with ease. Fenders were a breeze, I mean... They were literally underneath the panels. Okay, so here is an issue I ran into. The wheel being matte, color black, and in direct sunlight means every red light was lit to on not to clean this wheel with the product I am using, according to the theorized rule for detailers. The product's instructions even explains not to use it in direct sunlight. So what do I do? I proceed as usual, but I only work half a wheel at a time. There probably isn't a lot of logic here, but honestly with such odds against me like being in direct sunlight, dark colored wheels, a matte finish, and a strong acid base cleaner, I just played it safe and work in small sections, slowly but surely. I am willing to take on the challenge with just a couple of critical thinking brain cells and common sense. Obviously if it gets so hot to the point where you can't even touch the surface for more than a second, then Yes, you have a problem there that probably isn't the weather, otherwise don't let detailers or labeled instructions scare you into trying out different methods when such odds are against you. Just think it through, and if you have to take another minute, I say go for it and secure a clean detail. Yes, you may take a little longer, but to be very honest with you, it is better than testing your luck dangerously with these kinds of conditions, or just bailing out and picking a gentler cleaner that won't do the trick basically jeopardizing the whole detail. So keep hustling and finish the job accordingly to secure your credibility and respect as a detailer. The APC foam pre-rinse was called to order for the next part of the detail. In a foam cannon I serve some diluted all-purpose cleaner or a super degreaser to cut down heavy grime buildup, traffic film, and to loosen up any surface contaminants. This important step allows for a safer process during the contact wash by removing all the nasty impurities by chemical reaction. This vehicle was then blanketed with a cushion of bubbles to chemically loosen up all the nasty muck on the surfaces. Here I used SuperClean at 4 to 1, which has a high foaming solution in its chemistry which makes it a great duo for the foam cannon. If you plan on implementing this method, Use an APC or a degreaser with high foaming capabilities so you can take advantage of the foam cannon method. After lathering the vehicle generously, I let it dwell for about a few minutes to let the product do its thing. By applying it on a dry vehicle, it helps the product stick on the surface for a lot longer, has higher cleaning capabilities without any water running it down, as well as saving a lot of water during the initial rinse. If I had started with the water pre-rinse, it would literally not do anything to the stuck on grime by chemical reaction. Water alone can emulsify to some extent, but not chemically clean, which is why I like to pre-wash my details with some diluted APC in a foam cannon. I will make a full in-depth video with all the steps and signs behind this method, so make sure to stay tuned with the subscribe button below this video. Stubborn pieces of dirt always like to hide within the nooks and crannies of emblems, trim, grills, and panel gaps. To address those fine details, I go over the vehicle with an APC and detail brush combo to clean out all of the grime where a wash mitt would have trouble getting into. This process is crucial because no detail is complete without addressing the fine well, details, as the name implies. If overlooked, when you do the contact wash, not only would the grime remain present, but if you make it to the dry and protection phase, it could have the potential to drip off the surface, making your waxing process unsafe and inefficient. If you're a detailer, when should you detail brush a vehicle? 
Honestly, it depends on the state that it's in. If it had gone out mudding, there is organic growth, it rained a day or two ago, or clear signs that it had been neglected for a period of time, then I would say go for it. If the vehicle is under your watch, and you wash it every, I would say like week or two, then I guess you could skip this step. Obviously, not everyone has the same vehicle or climb in, so use your best judgment on which process to take to secure a quality detail. There are other methods of doing this, such as snow foaming the whole vehicle and brush afterwards, doing the contact wash and brushing at the same time, or how I'm doing it here, working in small areas with a spray, brush, and rinse technique. Whichever method is fine, as long as you address the areas as needed. But in my opinion, doing it like this helps cut down water usage and ensures the spent product doesn't dry up when in direct sunlight. Maybe if I had a canopy, I'd probably do something different. But for now, the spray, brush, and rinse technique was called to order. Now that all the grit, grease, and gunk, or what I like to call triple G's, had been addressed, now is for the most therapeutic part of the detail, the contact wash. In a bucket, I prep my soapy solution with a flagship product from PNS called Pearl Auto Shampoo. I love this product because it is not pH neutral, but rather balanced, which would further clean the surface by chemical reaction and with help from my physical agitation. I mix the bucket with two measured ounces of soap to about two gallons of water, which is basically 128 to 1 dilution ratio. I then add my wash mitts to absorb and prime all the fibers with some bubbly soupy goodness for the swirl-free multi-mitt wash method. My foam cannon was then filled with 3 ounces of soap to about mm, 13 ounces of water in the container. With about 16 ounces of mixed product to work with, it is more than enough to lather the whole vehicle, so no need to fill up the whole cannon. Pulling the trigger, a rich, creamy layer of foam was then sprayed all over the vehicle for the contact wash. This helps lubricate the surface when gliding the mitt, and it also shields the surface from direct sunlight, keeping the panels cool for a while longer. Now the solution is a little thicker in the foam than what I'm normally used to, but honestly, it is just oddly satisfying seeing a thick foam. And really, there is nothing wrong with playing with some bubbles, especially if you're freezing your hands out in the winter weather. The client may or may not take notice of such enjoyments, but if you're doing this as a career, I say do whatever you like to make your hustle a little bit more enjoyable. I get to town with the mitts on the car. Now, I haven't shown this tool yet, but it's basically a microfiber Chanel wash mitt with a long reach wand attached, or mop for short. This handy piece of equipment can help speed up the wash process by covering more area without any downtime adjusting the stepping stool or having to go around the vehicle entirely. I only use this on the roof and windshield, where my arm usually has trouble reaching towards the center. Now, some folk will think this will swirl the vehicle because there's only one side being used for the whole surface. And that is completely false. Because I have already done the APC foam pre-rinse, all the nasty grit had already been removed from the start of the detail. The only thing left is a light layer of grime, which makes the contact wash even safer. Remember, swirls are only inflicted when you do not use a quality soap, soft, clean wash mitts, poor wash techniques, or didn't address the grit first with a thorough rinse or a chemical APC rinse. Obviously, use common sense and think for yourself rather than being influenced by a not well thought out content on those detailing forums. Now, I love doing the multi-mitt wash method. It saves so much water, product spent, and makes the detail a lot safer with less scrubbing and a grit guard and overpaying for dedicated bucket pad washers. I will probably make a dedicated video on the different methods of washing a car such as the multi mitt method, two bucket method, and others through the detailing community. So if you're interested in a video like that and would like me to express my thorough opinion to satisfy your curiosity, then make sure to let me know in the chat box below this video. Now, because I am a one-man crew adjusting the camera angles and keeping an eye on where my GoPro is looking, I overlooked the spent foam on the right side of the vehicle and noticed that most of it had run off the panels. So, I lightly sprayed it some more just to make sure there is enough lubrication when I'm gliding the mitt. Now, the last part of the cleaning phase is rinsing it down. 
Setting my spray nozzle to 40 degrees and lowered the pressure on my machine, the vehicle was thoroughly rinsed to run off the spent product. Thankfully, I have a DI tank so I can have a spot-free water experience and can save a lot of time during the dry and protection phase. There really isn't much to explain here, so for your viewing pleasure, enjoy these shots. Busting out the BFG, <coughs> sorry, the Ego Electric Leaf Blower, I use this to blast out any water stubbornly hiding within the crevices and overall large areas. With approximately 650 CFM, this has enough wind power to blow out all of the water to ensure that no liquid drops off the panels when delivering it back to the client, which would look a bit unprofessional. Pulling the trigger, the water sheets and beads off, and thanks to the DI tank, the drying process is hundreds of times more efficient compared to using a drying towel. Not that it is not possible to dry the vehicle without a blower or a DI tank, but as a business when time is money, I don't think I need to elaborate why this option is far more superior than most manual drying techniques. Of course, this is subjective, and if you're not detailing as a business, then I guess I could slap a towel on top for some therapeutic, untimed drying action. But since I have a game passes to pay, the blower will just have to do. With a clean surface and most of the water gone, I move on to the protection phase by applying a spray wax to protect this renegade for its stealthy adventures. My standard wax of choice is the classic wax and dry spray wax from the helpful turtle himself. Paired with a premium 7030 blend microfiber towel, this can allow for an easy on and easy off application. Giving it a good shake, I prime my towel, then add a light mist to the panel and spread over the area. While it may look like a little at first, it is actually more than enough to protect and make the panel hydrophobic. Adding too much can cause nasty streaking issues, which will make it really frustrating to deal with, especially if it lands on the glass or the trim. So by priming your towel, not only do you get an even coverage, but the amount of area you can cover is increased because there is still wax present on the towel, which can be evenly spread out. Also, I love this wax because it is wet car and sun friendly, meaning it works better on a wet panel, so less drying, and even if it did dry on the surface, it can be reactivated again using a light spritz of water. Now some may ask, why are you using this consumer based spray wax instead of a detailer focused one where I can buy a gallon of it? To start off, just because it is a consumer based product for non detail oriented folk like us does not mean professionals or car enthusiasts are not allowed to use it. This product has pretty good durability here with California weather and I have seen it go for about 3 months or about 5 washes until it starts to degrade. Obviously, use some common sense on what soap and rinse method you choose to prolong the protection of the vehicle. So to answer why I use this, well, honestly, I sometimes ask myself that question with no real motives to seek out another brand to try out. I have used this wax ever since I was a kid, back when my father and I worked on the family vehicle, so this product has a special warm place in my heart that I will gladly use on other vehicles. I have years of experience using this wax both in favored and unfavored conditions which made me comfortable with it and learned how to apply it in my business. I am aware of other ones with high end technology and chemistry added to the blend. It is all personal preference and subjective, so you can use whichever wax you desire as long as it is from a reliable brand and can at least last a month with an easy wipe on and wipe off experience. Remember, it's not about which one lasts longer or which one has more technology added to the chemistry. It's which one do you feel comfortable with in applying in your work area. Businesses and weekend warriors have different opinions, so do some research to make an educated guess and test out the products yourself. There is no shame in getting the most expensive or the most economical wax. They will all likely get the job done with similar durability, so choose whichever you vibe with the most. To clear things up, 
I start working on the glass to get it in crystal like condition. Here I will use a high end glass cleaner from G Technic along with some quality glass clean towels for a lint and streak free result. Similar procedure as applying a wax, I prime my towel first just so there is some lubrication and wipe in a linear cross like pattern. I go over the same area about mm, 2-3 to three times depending on how it feels. Then a secondary buffing towel was used to get that streak free result. Now as you can clearly tell on camera this is a super high end glass cleaner with barely any product being used or physical agitation needed even in direct sunlight. It is free of any dyes and odors, which by the way I favor that for any chemical, and makes it a pure glass cleaner. I opened up the bottle and saw that it is as clear as water and smells a bit like alcohol, which is a sign that it is a pure glass cleaner that I will gladly wield in my arsenal. The quality of towel also plays a role here because my wet towel that wipes the cleaner on is a premium glass towel and a waffle weave buffing towel both from the rag company. They are extremely soft and pair seamlessly with high-end glass cleaners to glide on the surface like butter. Glass is a sensitive area to work on because it is the first thing the client sees and all of your two hours of hard work will be dismissed if a streak or multiple streaks are present on the more than one Benjamin dollar service that they paid for. So if you're doing high-end detailing as shown here, Please refrain yourself from using cheap or concentrate products with streaking potential and get yourself a quality product to work with. I know it is pricey and that's what I said back then when I first started detailing. Trust me when I say that it is worth it and you will not be disappointed when you try out high-end glass cleaners to pair with your high-end detailing services. My apologies for not mentioning this product in the beginning, but for the tires, I will be using Detail Garage's Signature VRP. This water-based dressing is the perfect candidate for this stealthy renegade because of its OEM matte finish. Now, as you can see, I prime my applicator pad first before adding some drops onto it. Main reason is because on the first wheel or two, the pad will be dry for a couple of wipes and more product will need to be added. So, by priming it beforehand allows for a consistent application without needing to add more. I start on the outer ring of the tire and work my way slowly in the center to avoid smearing the matte finish on the wheels. I don't know how many of you had worked on matte wheels before, but it is a pain to remove tire dressing from it. The smear sticks on like a sore thumb and triggers every nerve of OCD linked to my brain, so I would rather take the time and do it right the first try rather than having to go back on several wheels, addressing them for a minute or two, knowing that they could have all been avoided. Now, as you can see from the camera angles, there is no need to buff off the surface because the pad was primed and the surface was clean, giving us a smooth matte finish in a single step. The trick to applying a water-based dressing in one step is by priming your pad first and not adding an unnecessary amount of product. This does take some patience and getting used to, so don't be let down if you need more practice. It does take some practice and a quality dressing to do this, so if you are doing this as a business, take some time in the days and practice on your own time. You will eventually get the hang of it, and once you figure it out, your mind will be blown and your details will be more efficient. The turtle with the Q hat makes its appearance one more with a ceramic quick detail spray to clear up any remaining residue, bird droppings mid detail, and to add a light sacrificial layer of protection. This final step is important because there is no turning back after delivering the vehicle back to the client. So if I need to address anything that may, I may have missed, this phase is the time to do it. The wax had already done its job by adding protection and gloss, so I feel like adding a quick detail spray to the whole car is a bit overkill, and realistically speaking, to the unaided eye, you can't really tell the difference unless you are in studio grade lighting and really checking for defects up close. So unless it's a show car going to an event, the quick detail spray is only used for smears and fresh grime. If you have made it to this part of the detail, I just want to give you a warm hug for watching the whole entire video. This wasn't a difficult vehicle to work on, but I am glad I was able to document this for your detailing pleasures on YouTube. I take a lot of pride, dedication, and hustle to ensure I get some quality shots to the best of my abilities. 
On top of that, delivering the vehicle back to the owner, even though I'm not able to record their reaction, is something I always enjoy seeing and I cherish every reaction and comment I receive from my hard work. It's a heartwarming feeling that someone expresses such joy about their possessions because of your craft and passion that you have provided for them. And I'll always use that as motivation to work harder on my skills, knowledge, and philosophy in detailing, which I am always glad to share on this channel. Hopefully, as I grow this channel, I can execute my plans to give back to the community. So, for now, I just want to say thank you guys for supporting me, even in this video. Everything turned out well with the Triple G's removed, revealing a stealthy vehicle underneath. More exterior wash videos, tutorials, and product reviews are on their way, so please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified when my content is uploaded. Alright, that's it gonna be for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. There was a lot of befores and afters in this Jeep Renegade right here. I haven't done an exterior detailing in quite a long time for this uh, YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And also, you've, hopefully you've enjoyed the new GoPro that I've been using. It's the GoPro Hero 10. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns how I positioned it or maybe you would like to see a different perspective of how I would have it uh, Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below I would like to see your feedback to see if it was okay the way I recorded it or need to make some adjustments for the next video So hopefully you guys enjoyed it leave a like subscribe down below for more future content like this down the road Anyway guys, I'm out of here. Stay safe. Have a good time